I have such a powerful woman on the show for you today. Her name is Raven Fuhrer. Let me tell you a little bit about Raven. She is a yoga teacher, meditation coach, certified shamanic energy practitioner, and certified sound healer. She says that she loves helping people break free from old programs, and she's a renegade for freedom and self-expression. She's cooler than cool. I got to meet Raven back in Utah shortly before I moved, and I was so sad because I just loved her so much. I wanted to hang out with her more, and she started talking about sound baths you know that's how I the first time I met her she was doing a sound bath at the end of a breathwork session from the amazing Matt Clark out in Utah who I need to get on the show also because holy smokes this guy is so freaking good with breath work. But anyway, I went to one and she did the sound bath at the end and it was so powerful. And I was hanging out with her again later and she started talking about like sound baths in general and like what the purpose of all the different bowls and all these things were. And I realized I was so uneducated about it. (laughs) And I figured probably a lot of other people are too. So I asked her to come on the show today and talk about like more of the meaning behind sound baths. Why are we actually doing this? What are the, what's the intention? How does it impact our physiology, our soul, all of that? And because she also works with energy, like she just has such a deep understanding that I think you'll see laced throughout the show of, should I put this, what goes beyond just the visible and uh, Newtonian observation of the world and what really leads to deeper levels of healing and transformation. So super excited to introduce you to her. Make sure that you find her on Instagram. It's 5D Sound Space. We'll link that up. And the website is 5D, just the number five, or, you know, written as a number, 5D Sound Space. Dot com. They have a lot of these events out in Salt Lake City, Utah. So if you're ever in that area, make sure you look them up. They are cooler than cool. So good at what they do. And also, you know, if you're looking for somebody like this, maybe to come to one of your events, retreats, conferences, something like that, I can't recommend them enough. So let's go ahead and get into it. Here is Raven Fuhrer. Okay. So Raven, I was so glad that we got to meet right before I left Utah and you reminded me of me when you started going off about sound baths and like, people need to know this. And like, it just reminded me of me going off on some tangent about like gut health or nutrition or something. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I have never heard anybody talk about sound baths. And I actually had like, like in the way you were talking about it. And I actually had the moment where I was like, I literally know nothing about sound baths. Like, and so <laughs> for those of us, cause there's probably most people listening have probably been to a sound bath. Right. And the knowledge is pretty much, you just go and lay there and meditate and there's nice sound and that's nice. And you meditate and that's it. And you had a little more to say. So could you tell us what we don't know about sound baths? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I absolutely admire you and think you're just such an amazing human being. Um, All of us are on this journey of transformation. And for me, I was just introduced to sound therapy along my way. I, I, it was 2014 and I met a alchemical sound healer downtown Salt Lake city here for the crystal tones, um, convention or some kind of gem fair but I organically ran into this person and they introduced me to sound. So I apprenticed under them and I, they, they were based in Sedona. So I was able to go to Sedona quite a bit. And, you know, if everyone knows about Sedona, it's Sedona, like Hawaii, <laughs> there's vortexes everywhere. And it's just a really energetic, magical place. Well, um, it was just a real honor to work with sound and see what it could do for me. And it helped me with a lot of my breakthroughs initially, um, just not wanting to participate in substances or partying as much and really stepping into feeling my feelings. And I felt like the sound baths I was experiencing were really helping with that. And then what the mind blowing part was, is I had a client currently I'm, I'm also a hairstylist. So I'm a dichotomy of inner and outer beauty. Um, one way I just love working with the cosmetic and the physical reality and the other, there's this whole inner working that is happening that also needs to be refined and paid attention to. And one of my clients had leukemia and was suffering for in chemotherapy and trying had been fighting this fight for a very long time. And the person I was working under said, I, I believe that I can help this person. So 
I presented the case to my client and said how much it would cost. There's a fee because these bowls and this technology is very expensive. So a lot of people are like, oh, you're healing. So it should be free. But to get really set up to where you can do an advanced sound healing, it, it, there's an investment that needs to be reciprocated in, mm-hmm. you know, in the payback. So this teacher of mine did come and work with my client. And after about six months, that client went into remission and still is to this day, I believe. And that was my first like, whoa, this is really powerful what this can do. And and just observing and being there for the sessions and watching how deep that she would go into her own energy field Mm. and start to correct and get cells that were off balance to communicate with each other was, was just something that I wanted to be more educated on and to be a part of bringing it to the West Utah. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, met this mentor instructor and you went down to Sedona, like what kind of things did you learn about sound? Well, the, basically all of our nervous systems are runaway freight trains. So we're just responding most of the time to what we're exposed to. And if you watch TV or if you're in traffic or if you're in the city and you're not aware of how to meditate, you're in a constant state of fight or flight. So with the sound, you're able to, without having to do much at all, because I think meditation can be intimidating to people. They're like, I don't know how to meditate. I'm not into that woo-woo stuff. I get that a lot. <laughs> this sound is is um, so powerful because it does it for you. All you have to do is say yes And even if you don't think you're going to relax within a few minutes, if you have a knowledgeable practitioner, it will only be moments before you notice that you're not able to think because the thoughts are like clouds and they just keep disappearing and and, and vanishing away as the sounds start to relax your nervous system and your conscious cognitive thought starts to disappear. Mm. Is there any possibility that if done incorrectly, sound could like make you more uptight or more agitated or more? (laughs) I think this is what we were talking about when I intrigued you. I I think I said it could almost be dangerous Mm -hmm. because I have actually gone to sound baths where, and and you you know, and I, I have gone and taken many courses on musical theory now. And so each bowl and each frequency has a note that does align with, um, the composition of music. But before that, I, I was just winging it. And I feel that I was very lucky to have a mentor and a a teacher that did not necessarily teach me through music. It was through sound of frequency and feeling. Mm. Um, so I was very sensitive in that way. And so I went to a sound bath that I, that I didn't know how much education the person had. And, and it really messed me up. I, I felt so mm-hmm. agitated during it. The, the bowls were, um, and there's just so much to it, how you hold the bowls, how, mm-hmm. when, how loud they go, which notes you are playing. If you're playing notes that are compatible, if you were um, moving up and down the chakra system, because each note uh, relates to a part of your chakra. And that whole system is an organized system that if you're, playing it in a disorderly way is going to affect you, affect you energetically. Okay. So going to this chakra thing, um, like, is there, do you sometimes have specific sound baths where it's like this, this one's really focused all on heart. Is it usually going through all of them? Is there like, can you do specific, you know, some people are like, I really have an issue with like my sacral or solar plexus or, you know, can, are there sound baths specified to that specific energy center? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what a chakra alignment is that when I will pull out every note that aligns uh-huh. with the chakra system and I'll go through. Also, the, the 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 bowls are made of crystal, the ones I work with. So they're responsive to the humans in the room. So if I notice a bowl plays better, a different note, let's say we've got a lot of um, ungrounded people in the room and I hit the C note, which is the root chakra. I will know by the way that bowl plays, if I should play it more or if I should back off oh, wow. and respond to the energy in the room. So I usually let the, I, I do an opening intention and then I let the bowls guide the energetics in the room. And hopefully by the mm-hmm. end, and usually it is that the bowls are singing so loud, the more they start to get in tune with each other, the room starts to get in tune. And then by the end, a bowl that maybe didn't hit well, 
at the beginning, maybe like the solar plexus was off by the end of the session, it will be all playing and they're just bouncing off of each other. And then the rooms usually, you know, knocked out basically in another dimension while their body just starts to heal. Wow. Ideally. Okay. So, yeah, so you're, I mean, you do energy work also. So you're really working with energy there, like using the, the frequencies, the intuition that you're feeling and navigating what you're playing from there. Like you, it's all in the moments. Is that, am I? Yeah. It's funny because it is really very um, scientific. And at the same time, there is the aspect of just intuition and, and noticing the energetics in the room. I'm Reiki two certified. So I use Reiki with the bowl which basically is just to help the chi and the flow of energy move through the room, move through the energy systems and people to release what no longer serves because we outgrow things. Uh, As human beings, we're designed to expand and the same energy that is growing the palm trees that you're looking at and the mountain that I'm looking at is intelligent and it knows when to move things. And we are like that. So the sound just helps encourage that And Reiki helps encourage that so that we step more into who we're designed to be, let go of the shadows of our adolescence, our childhood, our traumas, because all of that is just a mental construct that keeps us from being our truest potential. Mm -hmm. And sound helps free you from this mental prison by letting you release old energies that are stuck in your cells. Um, I'm also, I did a shamanic energetic tradition training to learn how to just escort energy out with sage and feathers. So I just try to keep the space as integrous as possible and as safe as possible for, for people to feel um, really relaxed and able to let go. And I feel like with all of these things and all these studies incorporated, you can really have sound healing be an extremely impactful modality for breaking through, raising your frequency and, uh, ascending to the next level of your becoming. Mm. So the first time that I got to participate in one of your sound baths was at the end of a breath work session for Matt. So shout out to Matt Clark, like the coolest breath work facilitator ever. I cannot wait to have him come to one of my events at some point. Cause he's just got so much style to it. And you were there and you, so we went through, you know, if anybody's done like the full hour long breath work session, I mean, I have cried, I have laughed, I have had epiphanies. I'm just like in this wildly open space, you know, and then you hit us with a sound bath and it was so incredibly powerful. Like we were all so um, attuned to it because we were so open from doing breath work. So I was wondering if you could speak on that, like breath work. Um, you and Matt do still do these quite a bit out in Salt Lake together, no. like the combo like that. Absolutely. Once a week, we're doing a co-ed one. And then I do a women's group once a month with just women. And he does a men's group once a month with just nice. the masculine. So it's it's very available and we have a space in holiday utah called 5d sound space and matt is a very um unique breathwork journey where he takes you through basically a 45 minute deep dive into your subconscious mind through your breath and i feel like what that does is releases so much energy and at that point what we want to do is integrate the new information that you got during the breath work and so the sound bath is used in a different way than it would be on its own after breath work because it helps with the integration of your the function of your new cells and the new uh, neural pathways that are being created from so much release and so much um, breath, carbon dioxide being you know released from the body, all the dopamine, serotonin, everything that's pumping through the body then is integrated with the sound at that point. And it just helps bring a peace and, and solidify all the hard work that you did, um, during the breath work journey. Mm. And I, I, I've really loved having that. I've, if, if breath work, when, when I've done breath work, I felt like now that I have exposed myself to the sound bath after that, it does feel like, Oh, that'd be really nice right now. If right. While I'm sitting here, I was getting an entire like chakra upgrade at the same time. 
Oh, for sure. I mean, like, you know, breath work is still great, obviously, but I think if you've done it before, you know, you kind of end and you're kind of in this like, holy crap <laughs> kind of state and everybody just kind of like moseys their way up and you're just like, okay, I guess we're done. Like, is there a bathroom? Like it's and so it's such a nice landing to go into the sound bath from there. I got so much out of it. And I hope you guys, if you're ever in Salt Lake, or even if you want to go out to Salt Lake, it's, you guys have a website with these events on it, right? It's 5d sound Is that? That's right. (laughs) Okay, cool. Yeah. So check that out for sure. Especially if you're local, um, there's, yeah, they're really special. It's really, you guys have got a good vibe going on with that. So I, you know, hope that if anyone's hearing this, who can go does go. And I hope that I can get you guys coming to an event here before long because this, yeah, it's cool. Very powerful work. Okay. I had a question for you too. Mm -hmm. So I love to ask other healers, coaches, you know, people who are like kind of in the trenches with people and soul work, heart work, uh, you know, the mental, emotional side of life. Are there certain patterns that you are noticing are like really going through the collective right now? I know that's kind of a tough question, but I know like there's certain things that I'm like, gosh, this is such an issue right now. You know, do you, have you seen any big patterns like that? Yes. Yes. I would be curious. Um, it seems like a lot of relationships, people are really processing their boundaries in their relationships and, um, how they can, uh, it just seems like a lot of people right now are coming to an awareness that they've been allowing people to treat them in ways that isn't actually okay with them Mm -hmm. and taking a stand with what is, what is more in alignment with who they are now. And Mm -hmm. That's been my most recent common mm. thing is uh, people just really standing for alignment in their mm-hmm. relationship. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Cause I, just this morning when I go to the gym, that's like my like epiphany time. It's kind of like a hack to like a deeply spiritual epiphany place for me as part of my motivation for working out. And so one of those this morning was, I was just thinking about, you know, boundaries, right. Is essentially what we're talking about. And um, I thought about the word boundaries. And I thought about me when I was deeply in my people pleasing thing. And when I was just starting to learn what boundaries were and learn how to speak up for myself and learn how to ask myself, do I really want this or do I not? And can I actually communicate that or not? And what is going on inside me where I'm taking all their emotions upon me and doing all this stuff. Right. And what I, what came through for me was like, it just made me like smile with compassion. Cause I, I remember so badly being in this place, the word boundaries. I think what I see often, let me know if you see this too, but I see that people get into this place where it's like this harsh self-protective, you're not going to violate my space. Like you're not going to get into my, this is, I am going to, I doing what I want for me and like, screw you. It's like this, like screw you kind of over. It's a pendulum swing of like, I have no boundaries. So now I have these brick wall, like everyone's a threat to me thing. And I, you know, I, 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 just, I smiled and giggled with compassion because it's very natural to kind of go in that pendulum swing when you haven't had boundaries. Right. But to me, that space is still showing a bit of a lack of boundaries. Um, because what I've learned and I'm curious your thoughts, um, is that when you just honestly speak your truth and you just honestly show up for yourself and communicate how you feel and what you need, there's no need for this self-protective stuff. Most of the time, it just happens much more naturally. It's, I don't want to do that. Just letting you know, you know, can you share like just some of the path, I guess you'd say you see and people kind of overcoming this lack of boundaries or lack of, uh, showing up for themselves in terms of relationships. What do you see? There. I think with, I think with how we are part of the collective. So obviously you're ex- you've experienced this as well in a ex- uh, what's the word magnified way. Yeah, and so have I. And stepping into alignment with my boundaries has been really just being more comfortable being really who I am. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, even if it's right. small, minute efforts to what do I really feel like eating. Right. Is that the best thing for me and moving towards that. And the next thing you know, is you're doing that more and more. And then people yeah. do leave. That's the big thing. I think right. that everyone's got to get over. People are, they are in your life when you're being not all the way your real self. Right. 
are going to leave when you step into the boundary of being your whole self. Right. They're not going to be the same people that were there when you were being, right. you know, 60% of who you are. Right. And, and thank goodness. Thank goodness. Because who comes in right. are people like, like I met you yeah. and people like Matt and, right. you know, Kaysen. It's right. just been absolutely Rob. The, the people that are yeah. following in and the more Just talking I, about Rob and Kaysen who have both been on the podcast and I need to get Matt on here too, talking about breath work. So yeah, <laughs> if you case you're wondering who she's talking about, Rob Surston's Kaysen Reed. <laughs> yeah. Just real people. Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> and the more, the more you step into your authenticity, the more you meet these other people that are just wanting to share with the world. And it's just really beautiful. And yeah, a lot of people leave. And that's my message to the groups that I'm sitting with when we set out our intentions because so many people right now are just saying, I'm having a hard time with my relationships. I'm having a hard time setting up boundaries. I'm noticing I'm not being treated the way I feel I deserve to be treated. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh yeah, I just, it's all going to volcano down. It's, it's going to collapse and then recreate itself in a more healthy and alignment, beautiful way. Mm -hmm. yeah, I tell my teenagers that all the time. I'm like, just be yourself as much as you possibly can in every moment and your people will show up as soon as you start faking it. I mean, we all know like when you're not being yourself, is there any worse feeling ever? I, I, I refuse to be that it, it feels like my, the soul has vacated the body. I am now a robot, you know, and you're right. You just attract you, your, your frequency is off yourself. And so you're attracting frequencies that aren't aligned with you at all. So yeah, it's great. And then that kind of circles back to sound also like getting aligned with your own frequency. <laughs> exactly. And you can see what that is by what it, you are attracting. So if you are attracting a lot of weird relationships, it's always a great time to pick out the mirror and say, okay, what, where am I? Yep. Yep. Where am I at? <laughs> Because it wouldn't be approaching you if it wasn't in you. Mm, okay. I want to shift gears a little bit. I want to circle back to like now. All right. How do I say this? I've met enough like highly intuitive people that like I can kind of tell <laughs> when I meet them now. And I can tell that you are just naturally that way. Right. And so you said in the beginning that like when you found sound that you didn't want to use, I think you're alluding to like plant medicines or psychedelics or things like that. Is that what you meant? Um, no, I, I think that's what just launched my not wanting to drink alcohol. Oh, okay. Or Got it. Use um, Party drug type stuff. Yeah. Because Got at that it. time, I mean, initially I, being a hairdresser, a hairstylist that that industry is, is very much right. alcohol partying. Got um, it cigarettes. It's, it's not the healthiest. And I think that okay. is changing now, but this is, you know, 10 years ago when I discovered sound and I just felt like there was an escape to happiness without having to find it in the bottle of a, um, of a wine or after work. Yeah, after okay. Got it. Yeah. Reset and regenerate. And then I did launch plant medicines for me after, after sound and then came mm. ayahuasca and combo and um, my deep dive into the Peruvian traditions. I went to Colombia, Peru, Costa Rica, oh, and wow. started studying, um, through plant medicine as well. Okay. Okay. We all it together. Okay. So the reason I entered that with like, cause sometimes I've noticed like highly intuitive people, like plant medicines can be a lot for them right? They're very sensitive. And so like this much can take them to the freaking stratosphere, you know? <laughs> and so, okay. I wasn't sure if you had, obviously you've had a lot of experience with plant medicine. So that's what I'm kind of wondering too. Like, um, I'm a huge advocate of plant medicines. We've had many episodes about it on the show when done correctly with someone like you or someone who has actually studied. And, you know, I don't know if you're actually facilitating those. I'm just saying like, you're not you, but you've been through that kind of like tradition, like you've been educated, you know, and, and I just want to always say that that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about just going and finding some ayahuasca from some random dude that's going right. to meet you in the Walmart parking lot or something. Okay. <laughs> I'm not advocating that. Um, but, um, I'm curious how, you know, for, cause I think that we, I do have quite a few psychonauts or maybe, uh, psycho, not curious as a psycho, psycho curious. That doesn't sound good. Um, 
<laughs> um, but like people who are interested in it or have already done it, how would you say sound, you know, sound baths kind of, do you have any recommendations on how to pair the two? Do you like ending or beginning, uh, plant medicine ceremonies with sound baths? You have any recommendations there? It's just what I'm wondering. Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, in the ceremonies I've sat in I have always shared my music after whenever okay. I have I mean I didn't take my bowls with me to Peru but wherever there is a place that I've sat that I could bring my bowls I always share a song um and people are like moaning while the sound bowls are going because they're still in the medicine and they're like making very intense noises because it is, and, and it is so powerful and mm -hmm. it's amplified with the plant medicine. So you can it, uh, like hear people actually having that shift and, mm. and how it just so powerful. It really is. And I'll, I also think doing the sound healing got me in a place where I was ready for plant medicine because before the sound bath, I was, I was almost too sick. Mm -hmm. with my self hatred and my non issue, like the, my, um, refusal to look at certain things. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the sound was a perfect introduction to my healing nice. that naturally brought about plant medicine without it being terrifying. Cause mm -hmm. at first it is very intimidating. It always is. I've had a lot of journeys and it always before a journey is butterflies in your stomach because you have no idea where it's going to take you you know I mean you learn to trust it more but it's always a little scary but that's why when I see people like kicking off their entire plant medicine journey with ayahuasca I'm like all right that <laughs> And to me, that's like, I've never run a mile and I'm going to go drop into the Boston marathon tomorrow. It's like, okay, you want to start it like that? All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty intense, you know? So I, I'm more in the camp of gradually, you know, and I, I like, you kind of hit on this a little bit, but a lot of people are very resistant to meditation, right? But when you have a sound bath, when you, you know, that it's like something that can anchor you and guide you and hold you through that releasing of the mind, you know, which is hard for a lot of people to get to. So I like the idea of using sound, sound baths, sound therapy as a way to prepare you to be able to do that, especially since so many people these days are very meditation resistant. You know, I hear a lot. I can't meditate, which I understand, you know, it's very difficult to get there. So any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, I think that I hear that a lot too. I can't, I can't do that. Uh -huh. I also hear a lot. Um, the first time somebody sits with, or the first 10th time somebody sits with ayahuasca or any <laughs> kind of medicine, they suddenly are going to serve it. The medicine told me I'm going to serve it. And for me, right. I, 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 I don't have any desire to serve the medicine or hold that kind of responsibility. Same. But from my experience, I would love to have bowls played for me on the medicine. I think for especially like yeah. the more intense uh, types of processing that that would be mm -hmm. very soothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we always need to think about everything that's ever happened. I think sometimes right. just being able to like, have the sound take you through the journey. Totally. Thought could be very, mm -hmm. very productive. Well. You know, I did have one journey. Um, it was a little small group journey and it was facilitated by a guy that was trained very well. And it really opened me up to the importance of having an amazingly trained facilitator because it was such a powerful experience, but he had someone come and do sound bowls for us to kick off the journey. Right. So we took it and then we just entered into a sound bath. Oh my gosh. That was like the most amazing entry into a journey ever. It was just like, I was already lost in the sound. And before I was just yeah. like, Oh, here I am. And the, <laughs> how long has it been? <laughs> I got completely lost in it. So it's also from my experience, one time is an amazing way to start a journey. It was very comforting getting into that space, you know? So just throwing that yeah. out there. If anyone invites me, I'd love to do that. And one of another one of my teachers, the Eye Sound Institute of Utah, she is actually working with um, the hospitals, and they're offering up for ketamine treatments now too. Oh, really? So it is starting to be implemented into modern medicine and nice. um, into uh, psychedelic and medicine therapy for a healing and advancement. Wow. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So any other aspects of sound? Cause I know, okay. Sometimes I go, I go to all sorts of, I go, you know, now that I live here and thanks to Mr. Kaysen, I've been going to all these ecstatic dances and things in, in our area. And 
Um, there's typically sound baths after some of them, but they're different, right? Like somebody might be playing the didgeridoo or somebody might have like a rattle drum thing. And, you know, just all like when it's not in terms of like, okay, I'm hitting this crystal bowl at this note. Is you know, maybe it's like the, the rattles or you use some of these other tools. What is the, is that just to calm the nervous system? Is that the idea behind it? Or is there other method? You know what I'm saying? Are there reasons yeah. for these different instruments? Yeah. Every instrument has a different purpose and each practitioner is going to have a different intuition and a different training for, from what I learned about rattles is there is the sound the universe makes when anything is being destroyed. So energetics ideas, um, thought streams, paradigms, the, the sound of the rattle helps encourages destruction. And also at the same time, simultaneously, one effect of, of destruction is creation. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, you're, you're asking for, as this leaves, let this come, let this be born, mm -hmm. let this come in. So it's having um, that kind of intention. And when we do healing sessions with rattles, we're usually helping to encourage the, the movement of old cells out of the body and opening more space to be a hollow bone so that you're allowed to, you're allowing, um, new, new energy that opens you up to your destiny, to the possibility of your life. Um, mm -hmm. so the rattles are used for that. Um, drums, so very similar drums are used to help, uh, be out anything that's old and needs to go. So if you've got something stuck or somebody's like constantly, um, reliving the same pattern you keep attracting the same person over and over again you can't lose weight no matter how hard you try it could be an energy block and the drum is really powerful for helping assist moving that out of your stored cells and you can sometimes see results from that so each instrument has a different purpose and and that's going to be in the eye of the beholder or the holder of the instrument. <laughs> mm, thanks for sharing that about the, the rattles. They're always, they've always been my favorite, like yeah. in ayahuasca or in any sound here. I love the rattle to me. It feels very soothing, right? It's like, it feels like this constant of like carrying me through it. But I love what you said about like getting rid of the old and opening up the new and creation energy. Cause I'm all about that. So I was like, no wonder I like it so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a rattle? No, I'm mailing you a rattle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're so sweet. I, I bet I could find one around here. I feel like I'm yes, in that kind of right. right neck of the woods. So I'll let you know. That's a good question. Um, all right. Um, any other last words that you want to share in terms of, you know, the general public, uh, maybe people, this is their, they're like, I don't even know what a sound bath is. I can find that a little hard to believe these days. I'm sorry to tell you this, but if you have never heard of a sound bath, you are way behind you. You get your butt to a sound bath. <laughs> Um, but you know, just people like wondering, you know, best practices, any, any insights that you have in terms of being a participant in a sound bath. I know you're the practitioner, but just best ways to show up when you go to a sound bath. Yeah, it's, it's great to bring an eye mask. You'll be able to go deeper. If you, okay. if anytime you know you're going to sound bath, bring an eye mask. Okay. So many times people don't bring eye masks that so we provide them, but it just, no brainer bring an eye mask so that you can um not be, be stimulated by the room it's also cool to get yourself a sound bowl so mm -hmm. my first one was um the no f which is the heart chakra and i would just sit and play that for myself and it, if you're feeling called to sound it might be fun to get either a tibetan bowl or a crystal bowl and just start to play for yourself mm -hmm. um we are, of course, in uh, Salt Lake City, Upper East Side Holiday, and uh, our Instagram is 5D Soundspace, and then 5dsoundspace.com for bookings. We, every month, put up a list of breathwork events, sound events, um, goddess nights, men's nights, whatever. There's just, like, a bunch of different events, so we definitely would invite you to come to hang out with us, but also, you know, just make sure it's a knowledgeable source, somebody who's walking the walk, like living their life with that same mm -hmm. hunger and thirst that you have. You know, I think yeah. that's, that's how, if, if you, there's somebody you want to be like, then it's okay to listen to them. If they don't have what you would desire, then don't let them give you a sound bath. 
<laughs> I love that. I love that counsel. And then are you and Matt open to traveling? If somebody wanted to hire you for a breathwork oh, sound yes. bath combo. Would, okay. Would, if that's that. speaking to anybody, they are, sorry, I'm just gonna say they're the shit. Like I feel so lucky to have stumbled across you guys. Thanks to our mutual friend, Ryan and Kaysen. And I don't know how it all happened, but I like, I just feel like I landed the jackpot on the combo of breathwork and sound bath from you guys. So if you're looking for somebody that's like, like amazing, just what you said, heart center, doing the work, showing up, humble, willing to serve. That's you guys. So, um, yeah, I'll just put that plug in for you guys. If anybody's looking for something like that for an event or a retreat or something like that. So yeah. All right, girl. Well, I'm going to go hike to Narnia <laughs> and, uh, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time and we'll link up your, um, social media website, all of that. Make sure you guys can check the schedule. The website looks super cool, by the way. Um, and you guys can see all of the events that they have in Salt Lake city and then also contact. Can they contact you on the website as well? Um, yeah, they can email us at 5d sounds. Email. Email.com. It's on there. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Sounds good. Or just D- DM on Instagram or DM me on Instagram. Yeah. Either way. Thank you, Tara. All right. Thanks so much, Raven. Bye. Thanks. You have a good hike. <laughs>